It is the El Cheapo Quickie Trivia Quiz. And the theme, of course, is 1980s movie special. Now, it's multi-choice, right? You don't have to be an expert in any of this stuff. All right. First question. 1980 is obviously from 1980, right? Which film features people who worship Harley Davidson motorbikes as gods? Is it A, Death, Witch, or Death Watch, sorry, B, Cyborg 009, Legend of the Super Vortex, C, Galaxina, or D, it's The Empire Strikes Back, it's Dagobah scenes. You know, Rode, Yoda actually rides a, a, a Harley when he's not, <laughs> hasn't got anything to do. So there you go, kids. Which film features people who worship Harley Davidson motorbikes as gods? Post your answers up. I'm not reading them, so you're just doing it purely for yourself. Don't write down the answer. Just write down what you think the, the answer is. All right, we move on to question two. 1981, Galaxy of Terror features which famous, for all the wrong reasons, scene? Now, the character is called, I think it's Damola, not Pamela, but Damola. Now, what we're talking about here, right, when we're talking about doing it, we're talking about like the funky chicken or otherwise known as, as I would say, doing the bizzo. Right? So keep that in mind. So is a Damola doing it with a huge insect? That's A. B, Damola doing it with a huge worm. C, Damola doing it with a huge robot. Or D, all of the above, because you had a lot to do in the film. Oh, yay, team. So check that one out, kitty. So there you go. Damala, got to love it. Uh, <laughs> oh, I love it. Yeah, you're right, Yoda. Yeah, the cave. Remember the Harley in the cave? Yeah, love it. All right, move on. 1982, which film features a Kiwahara? Is it A, Blade Runner, B, Tron? C, E.T., the extraterrestrial, or the D, the 80s remake of The Seven Samurai. I couldn't think of a D properly, a proper D one. So anybody who picks D in any of these answers, you need your head read. So so which film features a Kiwahara? So there you go. No Googling, no cheating. Either you know it or you don't know it. And if you get it wrong, don't worry about it. Have a good laugh. So yay, team. So all these answers are coming up. I've got no idea what people are writing or what they're responding to. All right. 1983. Wolf. The space hunter had his 3D adventures in the where? So was it A, Forbidden Zone, B, The Twilight Zone, C, The Ozone, or D, The Sci-Fi Zone? <laughs> How good is that? And yes, I did actually put this question in purely because I want to get D in there. The Sci-Fi Zone, that's where he should have been hanging out. Yay, team. Love it. Good stuff. Okay, all these answers are coming up. I hope you're getting into a bit of trivia. We're not even halfway through the decade yet. So there you go. All right, number 84. What film did Gene Simmons from the Kiss Rock Group appear in? He's not makeup. He's not wearing makeup. He's, uh, he's, he's Kiss makeup. Was it A, Runaway, B, Iceman, C, Sex Mission? Interpret that any way you want. Or D, he was in the Ewok Adventure. He was a recast Wicked. <laughs> so <laughs> Warwick Davis wasn't available. So they said, oh, we just need a dude to play Good old Wicked. Oh, Gene Simmons, you're in town playing some music for the band. How about we just recast you? <laughs> love it. Absolutely love it. Gene Simmons from Kiss appeared with no makeup. Oh, he obviously wore makeup. He wore stage makeup, but not the band makeup. So, yes, very, very groovy. All right. 1985, The Planet Firing 4 features in which film? Was it A, Cocoon, B, Life Force? And if you know Life Force, you know that because it's got a hot... Um, naked girl who doesn't say a single word. It's got to be a good movie. That's for, for that reason. C, Enemy Mine. Or D, uh, that <laughs> crappy alien sequel number three. So, yes. Good old Life Force. Got to love the space vampires, mate. That was a canon movie as well. So uh, they're on the right track. Naked girl doesn't speak. Can do no wrong. Yay, team. Good stuff. Um, oh, that's interesting. Fire in four is actually an STD medicine. <laughs> you do learn something new every day. So you learn everything on this show. How gross is that? All right. Question six. In 1986, what girly magazine does Howard read in Howard the Duck? Was it A, Pent Duck, B, Play Duck, C, Rib Duck, or D, D Dags Duck? Oh, yeah. Wouldn't mind checking out a bit of Dags Duck if you know. <laughs> That's just wrong, isn't it? Oh, my goodness gracious me. So, yes, it's a bit tragic. But, uh, yes, can you believe that he actually has, he reads a girly magazine in the movie? As one does. So, yay. All right. Moving right along. Question seven. What in 1887 is a 6,000 SUX? Is it a car, A, a car, B, a robot, 
C, a spaceship, or D, a robot car which transforms into a spaceship. <laughs> Check it out. There you go. Oh, I love this one. Yes, pluck a duck if you don't mind, umpire. Excellent work there, Jeffro. So, yes, very, very great. We've only got two years left, believe it or not, before I give you the answers. All right, 1988. What two films did wrestler Roddy Piper appear in this year? Two movies in the one year. Was it A, They Live an Alien from L.A.? B, They Live the Lawless Land? C, they live hell comes to frog town, or D, they live fanboys. <laughs> I couldn't think of a better answer for that either. So check it out. Now, the reason why I'm doing the trivia quiz is because all these comments are going to make the video look really impressive in the replay. People are going to say, oh, my God, this is like 6 million comments. Oh, my God, what were everybody talking about? And, of course, they're just answers to the trivia questions. Yay, team. Very, very good. So, yes, check it out. All right, last question. In 1989, the film Slipstream featured which Star Wars actor in clearly, without a doubt, their best ever role? Was it A, Mark Hamill, B, Carrie Fisher, C, Harrison Ford, or definitely D, the guy playing the second stormtrooper to the left? Yes, they're always looking for something extra to do. So uh, oh, easily their best role. I mean, this is like Oscar-winning material. So uh, in a movie that, oh, my God, put the like the world on the map, as it were. So yes, I'm seeing all these all these all these letters coming. I have no idea what's going on. So there you go, absolutely fantastic. So there you go. All right, so it's time for them answers. So uh, hopefully everybody, <laughs> look at this. Gavin's. Me, I have no idea what all that means, right? Yeah, I mean, it's like it's like a chess like moves or something. So uh, you should put instead of saying all purely guesses, you need to put down checkmate at the end. Love it. Good stuff. All right, it's time for them answers. All right, so. Question one, in 1980, uh, which film features people who worship Harley Davidson motorbikes as gods? Of course, it was Galaxina. And if they're not Harley Davidson, it's Harley Davidson. That's how they present. And because they worship, because what they are is they're uh, bikies from this earth, from this earth, from this, this this time. But they've sort of like, it's like thousands of years in the future. And they've sort of like you know, bred along, bred along. So they're all still bikies, but they don't know how to ride motorcycles. So when the dude steals the motorbike, they're all like, oh, my God, you just kidnapped the god. But, um, yes, Harley David son. Even though it wasn't the greatest movie in the world, I've got to admit this sequence I did find amazingly amusing. Good stuff. All right, question two. Galaxy of Terror features which famous for all the wrong reasons that it is all for the wrong reasons scene. And believe it or not, this is what put the movie on the map. Everybody goes, oh, I remember for this reason. Yes, Damala doing it with a huge worm, as you do. <laughs> so they put it in the movie and they go, why? Are this? It was really, really, um, uh, what do you call it? gratuitous, right? She's naked and all the rest of it, this thing sliming all over it. All the rest of this gigantic worm, she's actually apparently enjoying it, yay, whatever. And of course, it made the movie became a hit because of that. So, uh, yes, it's a, yeah, doing it with a huge worm. So, make of that. If you haven't seen Galaxy of Terror, uh, good luck to you because uh, I neither have I, yay, team. All right. So, 1982, which film features a Kiwa Hara? And the reason why I put the remake of Seven Samurai, that's Kiwa Sara. But of course, it is um, the BMX bike. That Elliot rides in ET the extraterrestrial. So uh yes. Uh, Kiwahara, how groovy is that? Mm. Ah, good stuff. All right, we're getting to the 80s, mate. Oh, I love it. All right, 1983. Wolf, the space hunter, had his 3D adventures in the water. Now it should be the sci-fi zone, but it's not. In fact, it is the forbidden zone. Yes, um, Peter Fonda it was in a, in Space Hunter, a 3D movie. Back in the time when 3D movies were starting to sort of find their place in the world with coming at you and all the rest of it. Never saw it myself. Uh, no idea what it was like, but by all accounts, it was complete tripe. So <laughs> here you go. Space, what a great name. Space Hunter, Adventures in the Forbidden Zone. Now, if Jeff Rowe's watching this, the only adventures he wants to see is Buckaroo Bonsai because uh, that was, uh, oh, shit, what was it? Adventures, oh, I forgot about Oh, Adventures Across the Eighth Dimension. That's right. So they're the only adventure movies he wanted to watch. But uh, no, Space Hunter. Even today, most people will be going, what? Never heard of it. Anyway, question number five. Uh, what film did Gene Simmons from Kiss appearing with no makeup? Uh, and believe it or not, and he turns up on screen and you go, oh, shit, what the hell's he doing here? And, of course, it was in Runaway. So now, of course, back in the 80s, Kiss were gigantic. And, of course, the idea of having him without the makeup of the movie is like, holy guacamole. It's just like completely unexpected. And it was particularly groovy because it's set in the sort of the near future. Tom Selleck was in it as well. He looked exactly like he just walked off from Magnum. And he's got a, um, this character. I've got his 
character's name, shoots a gun and the bullet actually follows people around. So it's actually homes into an individual so you can't hide from it. So it goes around corners and all sort of bizarre. And they showed the point of view of the bullet. It was very, very groovy. Had Kirsty Yell in it as well, not long after she did Star Trek 2. So uh, yay, team. So there you go. Um, and you're right. Yes, Molly Ringwald was in the underage in the Forbidden Zone you got to remember a lot of 80s movies, they did sort of push the whole female involvement and you know, the scantily clad and the you know really pretty night because the sex sells thing. Love it or hate it, that's how it was back in the 80s. And, uh, yes, that's where we are today. So good stuff. Um, it was Kiss's Unmasked period, was it? At this point, I thought they were still right into it for quite some time. Anyway, 1985, The Planet Firing 4 uh, features in which a film and uh, yeah, most people – wouldn't even know where this planet came from, but if you did, good for you. It was, of course, was enemy mine. So, um, yes, two dudes stuck on a planet, a good guy, and he's, uh, what do you call it, the, um, his enemy. And, of course, they've got to become good buddies and, and learn to live together. So I thought I'd just chuck that in because I thought, I can't get everybody having 100% correct. Hopefully someone got this one wrong. And uh, yay, team. Good stuff. See their face and put the mask back on. Indeedy, doody, dighty. So there you go. Uh, oh, here we go. So Rusky Babes is at five at the moment, so he got run wrong. So maybe this was the one he got wrong. Anyway, 1986, what girly magazine? This is an obvious one for people who know the movie. What girly magazine does Howard the Duck read in Play Howard the Duck? What magazine does Howard read in Howard the Duck? No, it is not Dag's Duck. Well, I'm sure some people out there be keen to see one of those. It, of course, was Play Duck. Why would you do that? What's the deal? So um, I've never seen How the Duck, and I think most people out there would probably say they haven't seen it either. George Lucas copped the hammering over this movie, even though he was the producer. He didn't even make it, didn't even direct it. He just produced it, right? But everybody said, mate, it's guilty by association. So, um, And I have actually seen online pictures of the Play Duck um, cover with the, the breasts blacked out. It's a duck for crying out loud. <laughs> so unbelievable. So... Yes, exactly right. So uh, good fun. All right. Okay, here we go. 987, uh, what is a 6,000 SUX? Someone mentioned it earlier when we are talking about Robocop. And, of course, it's Robocop. And they said it was a 300 X. It got the wrong model. It's a 6,000 SUX. Um, yes, and they deliberately named it that way because it stands for sucks. And because when the movie was being made, they were making about a gag about the fact that it just chews through the petrol like you wouldn't believe. So uh, it's an American tradition, 60 as an SUX. And if you're lucky, you'll even chuck in a blow punt. <laughs> oh, dear, dear, dear. So, yes, good stuff. Uh, he only, hang on. Rusky Baby said he only managed 20 minutes. So I shouldn't have Howard the Duck. And, yeah, it's just, just the concept is stupid. But, of course, Howard pops up in Guardians of the Galaxy, funnily enough. So... Yay, team. All right, 1988. What two films did wrestler Roddy Piper appear in this year? Everybody knows he was in They Live. That's why I put Lay They Live at the start. Uh, and the second one, if for those who don't know, it was, of course, Hell Comes to Frogtown, and he plays the character of Sam Hell. That's the name of him. And the guy who made this is, became um, famous for making movies strictly for the video market. Now, this was at a time when the video market was really taken off, and a lot of people said, I can't shoot my movies on film. I can't afford it. I'll shoot them on video, specifically for the video uh, market. And this, and the guy who made this, Donald Jackson, did that. And he made Hell Comes to Frogtown uh, and was a bit of a big budget um, success story. So there you go. How about that? Very, very gritty. Um, Yes, and because that's the thing we haven't touched on is how the video market just transformed everything as far as sci-fi movies were concerned. I mean, you can say, do you remember going to the video store and there's actually a sci-fi section, right? Yeah, grouse was that. So uh, you're a sci-fi fan. You just, there's only one place I'm going to go. It is that section. All right. And lucky last question. Uh, the film Slipstream featured which Star Wars actor in clearly their best ever, even by today's standards, movie role. And, of course, it was Mark Hamill, right? So to be fair, Carrie Fisher was in The Time Guardian a few years, a couple of years prior to that, and that movie was complete and utter shit, right? So obviously Mark said, well, okay, Harrison Ford is doing so well doing Raise the Lost Ark and Blade Runner and all these movies. I'm going to be in a movie too. And Slipstream, I don't think anybody either saw it, remembered it, or cares about it. It was it just tanked, absolutely tanked. So, And until a few years later when he did Batman, uh, the voice of the Joker for the Batman animated series, uh, this one just did not cut the, mustard, cut the mustard at all. So, um, yes, indeedy, doody, doody, and that is all done. <laughs> 